hopefully you guys can hear me but hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is april and in this video i am just going to be answering some of my most frequently asked questions it's cold here let me calm myself down Disclaimer, I just typed some of these questions out really quickly for my reference, but I'll put the actual question here with the person that asked it. And they asked, um, what are good pieces to sew as a beginner? Well, when I was a beginner, I used to sew things like bat wing sleeve because, you know, there's not an actual sleeve seam for you to sew. It's just this shape, seam right here, this seam right here and then you know your neckline and you're basically done and then when you're working with knit fabric you don't even sew it at least i didn't when i was a beginner which is why it was so fun to make and other things i made were bodycon skirts gathered skirts um, i even made tutus those were really fun because you just gathered the tutu and then sew an elastic band to it and then you feel like you made something very professional. Also made pajama pants and pillowcases in my sewing class in high school. Next question is, I have a large chest and small waist. How do I pick a pattern size? I would say choose the pattern size that fits your chest and not your waist because you can always take in the waist to make it fit better. Do you have a favorite sewing thread? Yes, the sewing thread I like to use is called Guterman. How do you store your supplies and scrap fabric ideas? Um, I don't have any scrap fabric ideas right now and for storing my supplies, I'm actually in the middle of making over my sewing room. I took this organization test on clutterbug.me, I think that's the, what the website was called, and turns out I'm a butterfly. So now I know how, um, what like organization systems work for me. If you're a butterfly, that means that you need to visually see things, like you're afraid to put it away, so you'll probably just leave it here on the couch for days so you don't forget that you have an item. I never knew how to organize for a butterfly, but um, basically, I need like oh, pegboards, clear tubs and drawers, and uh, labeling, everything is what would be helpful to me. So stay tuned to see a sewing room reveal one of these days. <laughs> Where do you get your fabric? I mainly get my fabric when I'm making something from scratch, from Joanne or the LA Fabric District. I also go thrifting and you can use thrifted clothes as recycled fabric. And my thrift store has a section of um, just scrap fabric that people have donated. So I always search there as well. Is there a way to make buttonholes without a special foot? And yes, you can hand sew buttonholes. I learned it back in my fine dressmaking class I don't remember how to do it or do I ever hand sew buttonholes because I just use it on my machine but definitely search up a video on YouTube on how to do that. What are your essential favorite sewing supplies? My must-have sewing supplies are sharp scissors, a rotary blade, and rotary cutter. I love my disappearing ink markers. I actually just bought like a huge pack of them because you know, they're never around when you need it. I wouldn't say they run out pretty quickly, but I do use it a lot. So I just decided to buy a big pack of it. So I always have it handy. I also use chalk pens because sometimes you can't see the markers on like darker fabrics. So chalk pens are great. And my styling ruler. Do you think as a certified designer, it's mandatory to learn sewing or can we depend on our seamstress? Definitely, if you are a designer, you should know at least the basics of sewing because when you're designing something, you need to be able to, you know, tell your seamstress where, you know, you're supposed to get in and out of a dress or just different seams that are supposed to be there. That way you can communicate that with your seamstress. What sewing machine should you get as a beginner? So I get this question every day and I think the answer to that is basically whatever sewing machine you can afford to get because some people, some beginners might just want to get a cheaper sewing machine because they're not sure if they're going to use it yet. So. 
um, whatever you can afford and how much you are willing to invest in that sewing machine. I always just tell people who ask this question, as a beginner, definitely make sure your machine has a speed control. Mine has a little slidey bar and then I can make it really slow so that when I'm pushing all the way down my foot pedal, the machine is only going at the slow pace, no matter how hard I'm stepping down. Or when I wanna go fast and I just slide it over to the fast speed and then when I push down, it's zooming away. So speed control, automatic needle threader, threader yes. Automatic needle threader is very um, useful as well and the stitches I use most on my machine is like the straight stitch, zigzag stitch, and um, the um, stretch stitch. So those are really important. I don't care too much about the embroidery stitches. I rarely use them, so I if you know you're not going to use them either, then don't get a machine just because it has like 200 more stitches than a different machine. So patterns and pattern making is this next group of questions. Someone asked if sewing patterns are good for beginners or would you recommend drawing them? Sewing patterns are not for beginners or advanced sewers. I think they're just very convenient and easier to use because you're saving a lot of time. You can just go, buy, go to the store and buy a pants pattern instead of having to trace your own out and true it up and make sure it all fits. So it's just up to you if you want to put in the work or if you have something um, at home you want to trace already. For me, I don't use store-bought patterns because I actually enjoy the process and I get to practice every time I do so. Someone said to use patterns or to just eyeball. So that depends on the project you're making. If you're confident you've made something before and you can eyeball the seam allowance or how things are to be cut, then why not do that? But if you're scared of messing up something, then definitely use a pattern first. What's your best tip to make DIY patterns? My best tip is to trace your clothes and when you're laying it down on paper to trace, um, make sure the seams are all laying very flat so that you can mark the seams as accurately as possible. And then after marking the seams, add seam allowance to your tracing because what you trace is the finished product and when you're sewing, you're gonna need that seam allowance so um, the item is doesn't end up smaller than it's supposed to be. Someone asked to see my filming setup. I think I will reveal that when I also reveal my sewing room after I make it over. And someone asked how much room do you need for filming? I don't think you need a lot of room. I think as long as I have my cutting table space and uh, sewing machine space, then that could be enough, but obviously having more room is better than being cramped up, which is why sometimes I even like to just lay out my fabric on the floor so you guys can see clearly um, what I'm doing compared to um, you know bunching my fabric up on uh, my cutting table. But whatever room you have to work with is all you need to get started, so don't think you need a huge studio or anything. How did you get started sewing? So my mom owned a really basic sewing machine, but I never even knew how to use it. I think before I officially learned how to sew, I did attempt to use that machine, but I did not know about the bobbin thread, the top thread. I just thought you turned it on and you know, it would just automatically work. So I have attempted to sew things in the past, but I didn't understand um, right sides together either. So the seams were just overlapped. And then it wasn't until high school, I think my junior year, that I took a sewing class with my favorite teacher ever, Miss Mueller. And she taught me how to sew. And then I just became obsessed. I wanted to transform all my clothes I had at home, all the free t-shirts that I got from school. I would always do something crazy and wild to them. How did you learn to sew and make patterns? I learned how to sew in high school and I learned how to make patterns in college. Did you go to college for sewing? I went to community college and I got my associates in fashion design. What kind of sewing classes or tutorials did you learn from? So in community college, I took a fashion course and in that fashion design course, I took um, advanced sewing. I got to skip beginner sewing, but I don't recommend that because coming from high school, 
and skipping to advanced sewing in college, I felt like I missed out on what everyone learned in the beginner class. So um, I, if I could go back, I would take the beginning sewing too. But because I learned sewing in high school, I got to skip that. But beginning sewing, advanced sewing, um, fine dressmaking, draping, and pattern making. I think those were my favorite classes to learn from. Tutorials I used to watch. When I was in high school, the only YouTubers that were um, sewing were Threadbanger and Secret Life of a Bio Nerd and one or two other smaller channels as well. But I remember once I learned how to sew in high school, those tutorials on YouTube would be the ones I would follow. How can I learn to sew very minimal materials? I'm not financial to buy anything. I always just say use what you have because that's when we can be the most creative. Back then, I didn't have sewing scissors. I would just use my mom's kitchen scissors. Um, I would just cut on the floor. I would recycle clothes that I didn't want anymore or that I wanted to give a new life to. When the school gave all the students free t-shirts, I would always ask for a larger size so that I have more material to work with and cut the t-shirts out to design something new. My sewing teacher in high school would always pick up other um, people's scrap fabric so that she could bring it to our class and then uh, we can use them for little projects or just to practice sewing. So if you are looking for fabric, I definitely recommend you just search online. The Facebook marketplace is really useful and see if anyone has any fabric that they're just trying to get up, get rid of for free. I messed up my project really bad. How can I get motivated to start sewing again? I think before my answer would have been to just push through but um, after I went through my own little creative blog or project that I was unhappy with, it didn't feel good to just push through and finish a project when I was no longer feeling it. So now I recommend you just set it aside and maybe sometime in the future, um, you'll feel more motivated to finish it or turn it into something new. Maybe that item was never meant to be what you were trying to turn it into in the first place and now you might have a better idea for it i just started sewing and everything i do kind of sucks how can i stay motivated know that we all have to start somewhere and that at some point i really sucked as well what really helped me is getting it to my head that there's not really a right or wrong way of doing things, especially when you're starting and just learning. The best way to learn is by doing and you can't do that if you're not exploring random ways to make things. I used to limit myself all the time by thinking that I couldn't do something because I didn't know the right way how to do it yet. But once I made the first cut and stopped worrying, things just ended up working out. How do you work well without a dress form? So what I do is I stand in front of the mirror and then let's say I'm making a bodice, I'll go ahead and I'll pin the back of the bodice closed first so that I can be hands-free like this. And then once the back is pinned as well, um, I can get my marker and then I'll mark, I'll hold my finger. <laughs> it's so hard to see about where my nail is right here. That's where I'll mark it, right where my nail's at. And then um, I normally only like to mark one side and then I just transfer the same markings over to the other side. And then once that is pinned, let's say I need to um, take in some space that's underneath the bust. And then I'll just pinch it again on both sides. <laughs> this is awkward. And then again, I'll mark where my fingernail is at. Most of the time when I need to mark the back though, I'll have my husband do it for me. What are some cheaper dress form options? So on my channel, I posted before how you can make a duct tape dress form. That's something that really helped me out when I was back in high school and was desperate to um, just have a form to visually see instead of holding it on myself. I know some of my subscribers commented on the dress form video, other methods as well, so uh, I just can't remember. So if you guys have tips for that, again, leave it down in the comments or maybe go back to my duct tape dress form video. From my experience, I've only done a duct tape dress form and I really liked it. It helped me out a lot 
in my early days until my dad was able to buy me one for my birthday. Another idea is to just search online to see if anyone's giving dress forms away or selling them at a cheap price. Whenever I'm on the Facebook marketplace, I do see a lot of forms being sold. They're not um, like sewing dress forms, but I think it could still help you visually see and drape things on even though it's not as pinnable as the sewing dress forms. This is the last group of questions and a lot of you were asking about sergers. How much difference does a serger make for clothes making? I like using a serger because it cleans up all the fraying edges on the inside and makes it look very professional. Do you use your overlock in every tutorial? If the lining doesn't have a... Oh, if the item doesn't have a lining, then yes, I do use my serger to clean up each seam before attaching the next one on. Buying, okay, is buying a serger worth it? If you do a lot of sewing, then a serger is definitely worth it. I know some people don't even use their sewing machine, they just finish everything all at once on their serger because it can close that seam and clean everything up all at once. However, I still like to use my sewing machine because I'm always just like testing the fit. So if I make a mistake, I do not want to be seam ripping a surging thread. All right, thank you so much for watching and shout out to all my Instagram followers that asked a question for this video. I hoped that my answers helped you out a little bit and I'll see you next time. Bye.